everybody and welcome back to the channel. I want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers and those that still are subscribed to the channel. And I want to say thank you guys for watching my videos. I usually average about three to 400 views, but here lately I've been breaking 800 and occasionally getting into the thousands and that really makes me feel good. I want to thank you guys and I'm going to continue to do my best to bring good content to you guys. All right guys, so today's video, we are in beautiful Monroe County. Uh, out here guys to chase some bass with a BFS crankbait from Club Oaks Custom Lures. You can throw this thing out and you can straight retrieve it back in or you can uh, let it float up and jig it across the top of the water a little bit. This works great. Turn it into a little wake bait or you can run it as a mini crankbait. Alright guys, let's get out here and let's see what we can do with this thing. Fish in the morning. There's a little rock bass on the mini griffin. Put him right there for it. Little bitty guy. Send him on his way. See what else we can catch today. A little cranking today, guys. It's been raining pretty good. So I'm just hoping that uh, the bass will be in the mood to chase a crankbait. I just stuck it right in the tree right above me. Another rock bass. These guys are on fire today. I tell you what, they are hungry and feeding. I have no problem catching rock bass today. I heard something good over here when I was reeling him in. So I'm going to make a cast over there just to see. No, we get out of the tree first. Yeah, we'll make a cast over this and find out there's something over here. I feel like there's something over here. Got him. There's two of them over there. Come here, buddy. There's the first one. Right here. Not bad. There's another one over there with him. We're going to try to catch it, too. All right. There we go, guys. Let's get him back in the water. He's probably about 12 inches. We got another one over there with him. We're going to try to pop him off, too. Just a sec. I see him over there. I see him over there. I think he sees me too now. I'm not for sure if he's shot out of there or not, but. I don't think he's going to take a shot at it. I seen him over there, but I think he busted me. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he busted me. I'm not seeing him over here anymore. He swam on out. I thought maybe he would have swam back up into here, but. Yeah, they were back up inside that little eddy they were feeding. There we go. Push that one. There we go. Feels like a good one. Be easy with him so we don't lose him. Nah, he's not too bad. Just got him on that back hook. We finally found us another bass, a little bitty guy here. All right, let's go ahead and get him on up out of here and uh, let's keep moving forward, guys. Maybe if we put enough time in, we'll find a good one of these. See you later, buddy. There we go, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh, he came off, oh my God. That was a big fish.
That was a big one. Maybe I snagged a carp or something. I don't know. That was a big. That was a big bass. <sighs> Lost him. Got this one though. This one ain't nowhere near the size as the one I just had. <laughs> Big rock bass in the grass. <laughs> I just lost a good bass, guys. I lost a good bass. There we go. Rock bass for the follow-up. <sighs> I'd like to have landed that one I had. I could feel him putting power on it. I can't believe this piece of junk just broke on me. All the way back here. <laughs> just for this piece of crap to bust on me. You got a fishy on there too. Look at him, he just like give up. Now he realizes he's coming. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I gotta see if I can fix this thing. Crap. Alright guys, I uh <laughs> I tried to fix my reel the best I could. Let's see if it's even gonna work. Okay, looks like it's going to. I don't know what's gonna happen when I go reeling in a fish. But uh yeah. I just, uh, I repinned it together because it had a pin in it and then I just like wrapped my braid around it to try to hold it together. Ooh. Brother, ooh. what's that? I don't have like tape or nothing like that on me when I go fishing, so it's going to go in the trash when we get home. Yep, broke on the first fish. Where my pliers at? I know, buddy. I know. Well, guys, I made it about two and a half miles back here. Yeah, I broke my reel. I don't know what happened. It was just a, a rock bass. I tried wrapping some string and stuff around it. That's a no-go. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna walk all the way back out of here, two miles back to the car. We're gonna get another rod and reel because I know I've got more in the back of my car, and then. Uh, We'll go somewhere else, finish this off. I was having such a good time with this crankbait back here, guys. And then now this here happens. It wouldn't have been so bad if it happened back by the car, but man, I am so far back here. I'm almost to the point where I want to call somebody to meet me at the other end of this stretch to pick me up and take me back to my car. All right, guys. Stay tuned. Let's see if we can turn this day around. Taker. That we did. We had a taker. Hey right, guys, we're back. I made it back to the car. It's a, a little over a mile, two mile hike. I just took the road because it was faster. The creek, of course, winds all over the place. So if I would have stayed in the creek, it would have took me even longer. But we're back. We're back. Different rod and reel, same crankbait. Luckily, Gavin left his rod and reel in the car because my backups are at home. <laughs> hmm? 
Got them. <laughs> and sometimes you just let it sit on top of water like that. Just kind of wake it around and it'll fire them up. <laughs> He's gone. Yeah, don't think that you have to just constantly be cranking a crankbait. You can run it so many different ways. Of course, the fastest speed way to fish it is just to throw it out, crank it back, thump it off the bottom. But uh, you don't have to run them like that the whole time. I mean, it does work. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's probably one of the most effective ways to run the crankbait. But as you see, you can kind of wake them on the top surface as well and get fish to hit. Oh, there we go. We got another one to hit it. Let's see what may be over there at the falling down branch, huh? Got him. That's a good one. Oh, we go. Hey guys, not bad. They just, just kind of jerk that thing around out there. Like you don't have to get all crazy with it. And you catch you some of these little creek smallmouth. All right, see you later, buddy. And here's the best one of the day. Probably gonna lose him because of that fact. Okay, I mean, he's giving it. Yeah. There we go, buddy. Another beautiful, beautiful creek smallmouth. He's a long one. He's just really thin. Let's get him up out of here. Definitely the biggest, biggest one of the day right there. That was a good looking fish. Beautiful stripes on him, beautiful markings. Let's get him on up out of here. Well guys, we broke a real handle. We lost a good fish. I think I lost another good one over here. I can't remember. I've had such a long day out here. The mini crankbait though is killing it. Remember guys, you don't have to just straight retrieve crankbaits. I mean, of course, that's one of the more effective ways to use them. But remember, sometimes, man, let that thing float up and kind of wake it around the top. It'll get you hit. So we got one more place I'm going to go try, guys, to wrap this up. I want to try to get a big fish on this. I, don't, I haven't caught what I consider a big one yet. 14, 15 inches is nice, but I want something big, big. All right, guys, stay tuned.